uh, especially given the way that history is taught in the United States, to assume that, uh, that some great achievement or some at least impressive achievement was just uh, destined to be. Uh, but back in a hotel room in Los Angeles in 2006, uh, Pivot came to me, uh, not yet having sold anything on eBay, to the best of my knowledge, uh, and, and telling me that he'd really like to get money for an iPod, and he thought maybe he might sell his soul uh, to, to make this happen. And I was sort of like, oh, that's a cute idea. Uh, little did I know that uh, less than a year later, he would have succeeded in doing that. Uh, as it were, um, and that uh, not only would he have gotten the iPod, he also would have gotten a book deal out of it. Uh, and that led uh, to a, a blog, and uh, I think we all sort of know him at, uh, more or less synonymously with uh, the, the Friendly Atheist blog. Um, and today he's going to talk to us about, about broadening his, his skill. I don't know about this. I'm not sure I'm ready for this. This is a whole new this rejection and fear and loneliness. I'm, I'm in the group of it. All right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, just throw it on top. All right. <laughs> we can try. We'll Amazing AV people, can you help us plug this in? While we're waiting for the AV setup, let me remind you that there are conference feedback forms in your booklets, and those forms are incredibly important for us to make next year's conference better. Uh, so if you are uh, interested in helping us make next year's conference better, by all means, please fill out the form and give it to us uh, tomorrow. Um, but it's, it's in your booklet, and uh, that is much appreciated. For those who came in late, also the group photo is right after lunch. Uh, we will be directing you to uh, where we're going to be having that photo. Uh, and if you are interested in wearing either your SSA t-shirt or your group t-shirt uh, for that photo, that would be spectacular. Cool. Well, we're... All right. Please join me right. in welcoming Hemet Mehta to the stage. Thanks. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you for uh, waking up. Is that coming out right? All right. Yeah, thank you for waking up and uh, curse you, SSA, for making me follow Jerry. That's just mean. <laughs> um, so, hi, I'm Hemant. Um, I write a friendly atheist. Uh, how many of you are here at a conference like this for the first time? Wow. That's really cool. Why are you here? <laughs> Yell it out. Why are you here? That's, <laughs> that's <laughs> excellent. Why, I mean, what do you hope to get out of this? Why are you here? Networking. Networking. What is that? Community. 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 Street cred, that's the, <laughs> there are so many better ways to get street cred. <laughs> Let me offer this suggestion. You, yes, you want the community. Why do you want the community? Because you have these ideas that you want to get out to the rest of the world. Because the world believes a lot of silly things. And you want to get your message out there. You want to help them learn stuff. We see all this pseudoscience and, and false beliefs. And we feel like we, have some, we possess some sort of knowledge that we want the world to know about. Um, and part of the reason you're here is, one, because, yeah, you kind of want that reinforcement that you're not the only person who thinks that way. But I would say it would be kind of a waste of a conference if all of those ideas remained at OSU. You want to go back to your communities and then spread those ideas, right? I hope that's kind of the big reason you're here, to learn stuff and then spread those ideas out there. So here's the bigger question. How do we get that message out? How many of you have written, I don't care if it's a blog or on Twitter or a Facebook message or a a, a piece for your campus, newspaper. How many of you have written or spoken about your atheism before? That's a lot of people. How many of you haven't, but you really want to? How many of you are not doing it because uh, you don't want to out yourself? There's, there's a few hands up, and as there probably would be. So, you know, we think sometimes the easy way to do that is just if we have a good logical argument that'll convince people that's going to happen. It doesn't always work that way. But here's the thing. You guys know this already. What are ways we get our message out there? Uh, YouTube, blogging, Twitter, Facebook. There's so many good ways to get it out there. But I want to kind of split this talk up into a couple parts. 
first, let's talk to people who are going to graduate and you're probably not going to become a quote unquote professional atheist. Those jobs are few and far between. A lot of you are going to go into fields that have nothing to do per se with atheism or skepticism or critical thinking, what have you, not, not directly. But let's talk about how you could still get these views out in the world even if you're not going into atheism. And here's what I mean by that. Um, journalism. There are so many ways to do journalism where, that allow you to kind of voice this skeptical thinking. Whether you're talking about investigative journalism, whether you're talking about reporting on issues that need kind of that, that shining light on it. There are, by the way, a few jobs for writing about religion, which is kind of neat, religion reporting in general. But journalism, here's a whole field dedicated to critical thinking and exposing things people aren't telling you. That's a way to get our message out there, even if it's not directly saying you should be atheists. That's a cool thing to do. Um, Nate Silver, by, there's a perfect example for you. How many times in the past several years have we heard political pundits say, here's who's going to win the election, here's why they're going to win the election, I have some special knowledge about this stuff. All of a sudden, this guy comes by and says, no, all of you are wrong. I've actually done the statistics on this. I know how math works, and all of you are wrong, and here's what I'm predicting, and oh, he's like 99% correct. That's awesome. That's, that's critical thinking. That's kind of applying the knowledge we all really appreciate to a field that doesn't really have it. And you don't necessarily think that has to do with atheism per se, and it doesn't directly, but it does advocate the ideas we all care about. That's really cool. Um, what if you want to go into medicine? How many things can you do in the field of, uh, if you're a doctor, if you're a nurse, if you're going into anything in the medical field, uh, here's a brief list of places we could use some critical thinking. Um, alternative medicine, vaccines, uh, blood transfusions, faith healing, circumcisions. Would it be nice to have some more voices of reason when we talk about those issues? Because Dr. Oz doesn't cut it. So it would be nice to have some people in the field of medicine who know what they're talking about. FFRF, I don't know if Andrew and Liz are here in the audience right now, um, but Freedom From Religion Foundation, yeah, they do a lot of awesome work for atheism. That's great. But you know what? Even if you don't become uh, an attorney who does First Amendment issues or anything like that, becoming a lawyer is all about critical thinking. It's all about advocating for a particular point of view. And by the way, even if you don't go into First Amendment stuff, if you happen to know some of that information about what the legal status is, how, how the law works when it applies to religion, you can either do pro bono work, you can offer some expert advice when we, when we need it. And by the way, you don't even have to do any of that. What if you're like a criminal defense attorney representing people who don't necessarily have a voice? I think that's part of what we're all like supportive of. What about judges who are supposed to weigh evidence in an unbiased way? That's, that's what we do. That's awesome. Um, what about becoming a politician? That would be kind of nice. And by the way, you don't have to be the token atheist politician, but how often do we see Christians running for public office? All the time. Wouldn't it be nice to have someone who's there and saying, you know, I don't care if they say they're an atheist or not. I mean, I kind of care, but not really. Um, wouldn't it be nice to have a politician who says, look, I care about weighing the evidence where it matters. I'm not going to be guided by my faith. I'm going to be guided by where the evidence leads me. You don't even have to run for Congress. What about school boards? What about city councils? How many of you have ever run for class office? Great. We need more people becoming their student body president at their university. Get some Put the training reels on, go run for office at your school. That way, when you graduate, you can run for public office, and it's second nature to you by that point. That's getting some like intelligent people in office where we need them. Uh, what about becoming an artist? You can promote skepticism through your artwork somehow. This is uh, by Jessica Hagee, who I absolutely love. All she does is draw charts on note cards. Her website's called Indexed for that reason. And She's very clever about how she just uh, promotes her thoughts with her art. She's great. <laughs> um, I'm a high school teacher, um, and teaching is a great way to promote critical thinking no matter what you're teaching. Uh, really quick, uh, here's a, test, a question you'll never see on a standardized test. Yell out the answer when you think you know it. Which one doesn't belong?
Raise your hand if the answer is one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> nice. My <laughs> hands all around. What's the right answer? Correct answer is number one. Yeah, no, that's the right answer. The answer is number one. Why? Because two doesn't have a border, and three is a circle, and four is green, and five is tiny, and one's the only one that has nothing weird about it. <laughs> the weird thing is the high school students will fight over the answer for this. Like, what? You said two? You're an idiot. Oh, they'll argue, and I just sit back and smile. It's great. Seriously, it doesn't matter what you're teaching. Teaching is all about getting kids to think the right way. And that means thinking critically. It doesn't mean they're atheists necessarily. It means getting them to think in a way that will get them to have these types of discussions. It's great. Um, I was going to play you a clip, but I don't know if the sound's working, so I'm going to skip that. But the point is, you could do so many things, and it's awesome. Um, any field you go into, it doesn't have to be an atheism-related field. You can promote skepticism and critical thinking, and I hope you do, because otherwise, uh, why are you here? It doesn't matter if you're here, if you're not going to spread these ideas. Um, now, how... Thank you. <laughs> so here's the deal. How many of you became atheists because you read a book that convinced you, something like The God Delusion, that convinced you, okay, uh, this is interesting? That's actually a lot fewer than I thought. Only a handful of hands are up. How many of you changed your mind because uh, a friend of yours convinced you that religion was wrong? Not a lot of hands either. So uh, I'll try this again. If you can answer me in like a word or two, why did you become an atheist if you became an atheist? Read the Quran. Read the Quran. Science. Convincing arguments. Yes. Atheist experience. Honesty. Okay, here's the deal. I promise you that about five, ten years ago, the answer probably would have been, I read The God Delusion, or I read Sam Harris, or I read Christopher Hitchens, something like that. Um, Ten years ago, it probably would have been mostly, well, someone convinced me of it. The cool thing is, I think most of you probably have different answers to that question now. People are becoming atheists in so for so many different uh, reasons. Like, they're all learning about atheism in different ways, which is really cool. And that makes our job a little more difficult, because it doesn't mean, oh, if I just write a really interesting book, everyone would become an atheist. That works for, like, one person in the world. <laughs> Like, it doesn't, but the cool thing is, it doesn't matter. You don't have to write the book anymore. So here's a, uh, another thing. My students, they don't really read blogs. That Blogs are done. They, seriously, it's sad for me, <laughs> but they don't. They also, by the way, they don't really use Facebook anymore. So that kind of, that thing is going away. It's just not cool for them anymore. Um, they pretty much do everything on their phones. So that means, as atheists, if we want to reach out to people who may be susceptible to hearing what we, who may be, you know, open to hearing what we have to say, we have to find new methods of reaching out to them. You guys, I feel old now. I'm like 31 August. <laughs> I've heard this from August before because we've talked about I feel old in this room because I'm like 10 years older than a whole bunch of you, and that's a scary thought. But here's the thing. All of you who are in college right now, some of you who are in high school or about to be in college, you guys are way better at adapting to the new technologies. And what I want you to be thinking about as you're doing all this is, by the way, I know like four things on that list up there. <laughs> But you guys know way more of them. And what I want you to be thinking about is, OK, here's a new thing, like, um, like Vine. I have no idea how to use it effectively. But you guys probably do. So the question I want you to be asking yourself is, is there any way I could promote my views on that medium? Because guess what? Richard Dawkins isn't doing that. <laughs> He's not. But if you guys can take these new technologies and find a way to promote it, and I don't care if it's atheism or any other view that you have, I don't care. But can you effectively leverage that new technology? Because the old ones are going to be gone soon enough. And the old people aren't going to be able to adapt as well. But you guys can. So find a way to kind of take use of that. And that's kind of this, the second thing I want to talk to you about. I've been trying to do that myself. Sometimes effectively, sometimes not. But I think this is probably one of the, the best things for me personally that I could be doing right now, which is that 
I don't think blogs are going to be around for very long. I don't think in the way they are right now, I don't think they'll be that effective. That means I got to adapt to some of the new stuff if I want to get my ideas across. So, you know, my primary medium is my blog, but here's a story for you. Last summer, um, I've, been, I've been doing the blog for like seven years now. Last summer, I got an email from this guy who worked at a local college, and he, he teaches classes about new media. Um, YouTube and the like. And he said, you know, I want to kind of do a documentary about coming out as atheists, and I was wondering if I could talk to you about that stuff, because I've written a lot about that. So we met up, and we talked, and he said, here's what I want to do. I want to make a documentary uh, mostly about students in the Chicago area, where we're from, and I kind of want to find out, you know, uh, what's it like coming out as an atheist? What are some of the struggles young atheists have? And what ended up happening is he came over to my house, and he just kind of, we set up a camera, and he asked me leading questions, you know? Um, what are you afraid of? Uh, are you afraid of coming out as an atheist to anybody? What should young people be cautious about when they come out to people? And I answered those questions for him. And what ended up happening is uh, he, he ended up asking a few different students those questions too. And then he started putting up clips on YouTube of those answers with our permission. He put up clips on YouTube where it was just two minute clips of, you know, where do atheists go when they die? And he would have our answer there. And we started doing that a couple of times. And the weird thing is, for a channel that has no advertising or promotion, turns out if you just tag it, atheist, atheism, death, um, <laughs> people find it. And people started watching it. And it's, it's really cool. Like, we didn't even try, and people were coming. Um, and then we were like, well, there are so many other questions people have about atheism. Like, where do you get your morality from? Um, how do you tell your parents you're an atheist? Um, is atheism a religion? We started doing those questions. And then we're like, wait a minute. We can answer even more stuff. Like, what do atheists, atheists think about issue X and Y? And you know, how should atheists handle the Hobby Lobby verdict? Um, is atheism bad for business in Hollywood? Because we know how many Christian movies they make. How come there's no movies about atheism? Um, was it a good or bad idea for Bill Nye to debate Ken Ham? Um, and we started just throwing out random questions, and the cool part is people started watching. Um, and then we're like, you know what the internet really likes? Lists. Buzzfeed like lists. <laughs> so then we're just like, all right, let's just make a whole bunch of lists. And uh, so this is just one example of a, of a thing we made. I don't know if you could hear this at all. No, you can't. But you could see it's a list because there are numbers by my face. <laughs> but here's the thing. Those videos, we started this channel, and it just became, let's just, people are asking so many questions. And it turned out a lot of people on YouTube are jerks. <laughs> Turns out when you watch them, it's like, why is this man yelling at me? <laughs> and, and you can't find that many places for people to just get straight answers about some of these basic questions. It, it's weird, but they're not out there that much. And so, I don't know, it's been like a year and the channel's gotten like 80,000 subscribers for no reason whatsoever. Um, and by, I don't even show skin. They're still coming. <laughs> But the weird thing is this, for, I've been doing this for like seven, uh, the writing stuff for seven years, and I get so many more emails from people on YouTube saying, I saw a video you did, and that's why I started watching you. And that boggled my mind, because I'm like, well, everyone reads web. No, they don't read. They just watch videos, which is crazy. Um, so here's what I learned from that experience. It turns out if you could just speak your mind about some stuff, people are going to find you. I realize that that's kind of unfair for me to say because I do kind of have a platform to speak about this stuff. But the weird thing is, on all of these mediums, if you just tag it properly, if people can search for atheists, like, they'll find you. If you write like a short essay and post it and, and upload it to Amazon for like whatever, a dollar, whatever they charge for the Kindle singles, and you have a nice title with some good keywords, people will find your book. If you sell it for free, they will find it. They'll download it. They'll find a way to get it. How many of you have ever written anything and you, uh, about atheism, about your beliefs, and you heard from people and you were, you were kind of surprised that people read what you had to say and you didn't expect it? How many people have had that experience? It's a lot of people, especially for people, and I know this from, from the internet world, like if you start blogging, People will find you, and they will comment on your site, and they're like, how did, you, how did you even find this website? Who cares? They do. I know it happens on YouTube, too, a lot. Um, so here's the deal. Um, the cool part 
one of the things I do want to tell you about, if you've ever written anything uh, about religion, if you've ever written an essay about it, you could start recycling all that material. This is the cool part about YouTube. A lot of the stuff that I talk about on the YouTube channel is stuff I've written on my website already. It's not like I'm reinventing the wheel every time to come up with a new video. We just take stuff I've written and then I say it out loud. <laughs> it's, it's not double the work, which is the cool part. So we could do multiple videos at a time and just be like, oh, well, let's just take that thing you wrote four years ago that no one ever read and just turn it into a video and now people will watch it. If you've ever written an essay, you now have fodder for promoting it on Twitter many times over. If you've ever written an essay, you could say it and turn it into a podcast or turn it into a video or do anything like that. Uh, you could start recycling all of this stuff. If you're a photographer, you now have material and, and you can find a way to artistically portray skepticism and things like that. You can post it on Instagram, you can post it on Flickr, whatever it is people are using now. If you speak a different language, you could start translating a lot of this stuff into a language that other people can understand, which is a power that I don't have because I don't speak another language that well. Um, and by the way, I, all the forms I'm talking about are just in the United States. How many other forms of media are there that we never even touch because they're popular in other countries but not ours? So I hope one thing I can leave you with is I want you guys to spread your ideas. I hope you could find some technology to do it with if you don't feel comfortable doing it publicly because you don't want to out yourself, that's fine. I don't know if Heba uh, is in the room. I haven't met her yet, but here, hello. I read your website for so many, many months and I had no idea who you were because you blogged under a pseudonym. But it worked because your ideas were out there and I'm glad you're like not anonymous anymore. That's wonderful. Um, but this is the thing, you could do all this stuff anonymously. Maybe not on YouTube. Wear a mask if you want to, it doesn't matter. But you could do all this stuff anonymously. People will still find it. You will still get a way to, to put it out there, and that's awesome. Um, so let me give you four tips for when you do put your uh, ideas out there, all right? Um, trying a new medium. Here's some ideas for you. First of all, don't get frustrated if it doesn't work immediately. It almost never works immediately, but you guys would be surprised at who's listening. Um, it's weird to get emails from people who are like, thank you for for writing this essay or for posting this video or something. Um, it's crazy how many people can, can find this material and you'll never think that they're going to find it. Um, another thing, if you could help it, don't do it half-assed. Here's what I mean by that. I know not everyone can afford like a nice camera or good audio equipment or something like that, but if you are gonna write something, use grammatically correct sentences. Um, no, seriously, that, that makes a difference of, to how seriously I take you. You guys have seen comments online from, in like all caps, and you're like, I'm not listening to anything you have to say. But if you phrase it in a way that is just, oh, this person looks like they can speak English, and I, I can take them seriously. Um, and by the way, if you don't have the ability to make like a professional quality video, who cares? Because we've all seen YouTube videos that's just made on someone's like iPhone camera or just some crappy sounding podcast, but it's awesome because they're saying these ideas. Um, I forgot who just, uh, who said Matt Dillahunty. How many of you watched The Atheist Experience or have seen a clip of it before? Do you see the set? This is not like high quality <laughs> set. It's a public access cable show. We're talking Wayne's World stuff here. <laughs> but it's awesome because their ideas get out to so many people because all they do is they just, all right, we'll put a background up, we'll just talk, people will find it. It works and it's so cool. Um, it looks awful, but it sounds great. <laughs> um, the other thing, embrace the new technologies like we talk about. Like, who knew Google Hangouts? When I first saw it, I'm like, this looks crappy. I don't get why anyone would use this. But uh, hey, uh, Free Thought Blogs has entire online conferences with the technology. That's an awesome use of that new technology. Um, does anyone remember listening to this guy years ago? <clears throat> Infidel Guy podcast? This is one of the first podcasts I can remember ever listening to, because I'd never heard of a podcast at that time. He heard of this new technology, he embraced it, and I swear, this was like, if you haven't heard of this, this was a big show. It had more subscribers, I promise you, than any other atheist thing out there um, until podcasts became bigger and popular and stuff. And <clears throat> I listen to Seth Andrews a lot now. He's great. 
<clears throat> but again, podcasts, who knew that was gonna be a way to get messages out? And now it's like, how could it not be? It's such a great technology to use. Um, Twitter, who knew Twitter would be a way to be an activist? But strangely enough, with like a one sentence tweet, you can get a lot out there. You could start some crap if you really want to. Um, that was my favorite hashtag for that. <laughs> <laughs> Last thing, and this everyone who does anything publicly knows this, you got to be prepared for the backlash, especially when you are talking about something as controversial as we talk about. Um, don't read the comments. Read the comments. <clears throat> that is a smart idea. One of the weird things about transitioning to the newer medium, for me anyway, of YouTube, is that now people comment on how I look. They don't really do that on the website. So I've learned a lot about myself. <laughs> I'll be honest, I don't really read the comments that talk about that, but my wife does. <laughs> and then she reads them back to me <laughs> because she's evil. <laughs> but here's the thing, if you're on social media, it doesn't matter what you're, and especially if you're a woman, no matter what you do, people are gonna comment on this stuff. And I'm sure if you hear from other people this weekend, they will tell you how to deal with that stuff a lot better than I can. It's gonna happen, and it doesn't matter to me anyway, whether you decide to shut down your comments to avoid that, or you find a way to just like, all right, say it, I don't really care, I'm not gonna pay attention, or you deal with it in another way. It's gonna happen. Don't take it personally. These people don't know you, they just hear your ideas, and you are all a threat to a lot of people just because you have these strong ideas that happen to be based in the evidence. So um, yeah, be prepared for it. Um, but if you can find a way to deal with it in a good, positive way, I think that's probably the hardest obstacle to overcome in trying these, these new technologies. Um, you can tell I'm losing my voice and it's already just early in the morning. One, uh, and uh, finally, oh, thank you, that'd be awesome. Down below, Down below. excellent. <clears throat> uh, one new thing, or one, the biggest idea to leave you with here, Anything you do to reach out to a new audience, if you try a new format, and there's all these new technologies out there to use the new formats, you could take all these old ideas and bring them to a new audience. Any of you, um, I read The God Delusion after I had already become an atheist, and so I read The God Delusion, I'm like, this is nice, it's not for me, because I already know most of this stuff. And I'm sure any of you who, uh, like you're gonna hear from a lot of atheists this weekend, and I think a lot of the time you're gonna be like, all right, like I, I know why I should be an atheist. Like that, that doesn't bother me that much. But the cool thing is when you embrace these new technologies, you are talking to people who have never heard these ideas before. Um, how many of you cringe when you hear that phrase, new atheists? <laughs> and it's a weird phrase because there's really nothing new about anything they are saying. But what's cool about it is that, you know, when the best-selling books came out like 10 years ago, that was kind of bringing those old ideas into a totally new format that really hadn't embraced atheism before. Um, and all these new things. YouTube, you can find a bunch of atheists on there. Podcasting, you can find a bunch of atheists on there. Blogs, totally. But all the new technologies that are out there, they haven't seen like that influx now. And I promise you, every church in the country is trying to figure out how they can get their message across on those new mediums, so we should be doing the same thing. Um, one way of, I just wanna point out one example of it. Uh, my friend Greta Christina, who I don't know if she's here uh, either, she wrote this awesome essay years ago about why she's an angry atheist. Um, and there's a lot of reasons, if you're an atheist, to be angry about the things religion has done. So she wrote that essay. It totally went viral online, and that's awesome. Um, I don't know if she, I, I hope I'm not stealing uh, her train of thought here, but I think part of her was like, how do I get that essay that totally struck a nerve with a lot of people, how can I get that to a new audience? And then, years later, she ended up writing a book of the same name. It's the same ideas expanded upon, but that book reached a totally different audience than her blog post did without that much additional effort in terms of ideas. And then I've seen her talk about this stuff in person a lot. And the public speaking reaches a totally different medium. And all the videos of her speeches reach a different audience. So one thing that she did turned into a message that could be spread in so many different ways. And that's kind of the power of what I'm talking about. Um, and so I will close up here pretty much. Um, I did this, by the way, 
last year, this company called, or a couple years ago, this company called Hyperink came to me and they said, we want to turn your blog posts into a book. I'm like, that sounds dumb. Um, <laughs> you know my blog is free, right? They're like, right, but here's what we'll do. We'll compile some of your posts, clean them up a bit and stuff, and we'll just put them into a book and slap a title on it. <clears throat> and um, we'll just, we'll do it. And they did like all the work. And I'm like, oh, let's, let me, I'll select the posts. And they did all the work. I'm like, why would anyone buy that? Like, again, you could find all this stuff online. They're like, trust us, it'll work. <laughs> and the weird thing is people buy this. <laughs> why? I don't know. But the point is, additional effort, none. But again, it's just getting it out to a new medium and people will embrace it somehow. It's so strange. Um, my information is here. If any of you have any questions about anything I'm talking about, if your group is ever doing anything really cool that I might be able to help publicize, please get in touch with me. Um, and then if there's any time left, I'd be happy to answer questions. But again, the point I want to leave you with here, more than anything else, like Jerry said a little bit ago, all of you come from different places. You all have unique ideas. People need to hear about them. And I don't care if you do it anonymously or not. Use the new technology. Get it out there. People will hear about it. And I think a lot of people become atheists because they hear someone else talking about it. They get more comfortable with it. So it's not enough that this is happening in this room and at this conference. That message needs to be amplified. And that means all of you are ambassadors of that. So make that happen. Cool. Thank you. Um, but the point is, look, 
I am there to teach them how to think critically and think logically, and I don't care where they end up. With. I've written recommendation letters for students to go to like fundamentalist Christian schools because that's what they need from me. They need that sort of thing. My job is not to promote my beliefs onto them. What I can do is to, you know, I think the nice thing about being public about where I'm at is people kind of know where I stand on these things, and so they're willing to talk to me outside of the classroom about it. That's a different issue. Um, but um, it doesn't matter what you teach. The goal is to teach people to think critically, ask the right questions, play devil's advocate when you're having a discussion in the classroom just to challenge anything they say. I think those are good values we can all promote uh, without getting into trouble. Um, I don't know if I answered your question or not. Yeah, that's good. Cool. Um, I'll talk to you later, buddy. Education, great career to, to do all this stuff in if you're, if you're considering it. Yes? Um, so, uh, one comment about your previous ones. Uh, I'm a, also a teacher at the college level, so I teach here at Ohio State as a professor. And one of the things that I think that's available to professors and to teachers is the secular safe zone that's offered by the Secular Student Association, how to help uh, secular students in various areas kind of yeah. come out. So that's one thing that one can be doing as a, as yeah, a teacher. Yeah, promoting the secular teacher. safe zone, yeah. letting students know that if you are an atheist, if you have those ideas, this is a welcome space for right. you. Yeah. But on the previous comments, and uh, this is kind of some of the stuff that the nonprofit offers, the intentional insights that uh, my wife and I run, is that um, there are subtle ways of promoting secularization and I wonder if there are, so one of the, we promote critical, rational thinking as a way of promoting secularization. And I noticed there was a little bit of a disconnect between the first part of your presentation and the second part where you were kind of being more aggressive in the second part. Yeah. And the first part is about kind of promoting rational thinking. One yeah. can also promote secularization in subtle ways through promoting rational thinking. That's one point I want to make. Second point I want to make is that one can promote uh, also thinking about how one speaks, not only speaking to thinking, cognition, but also speaking to emotions, and that's one of the things we talk about as far as for nonprofit, strategic ways of speaking to people's emotions. Yeah, and I, and think, I think that's those one of the two, things from the atheist side. We're always, right. we're always a little shy about like trying to emotionally connect with people. Jerry does it really well. Mm -hmm. He knows how to really get people thinking about that stuff. Like He speaks to your heart. You're really good at that. I don't know, I've always found that to be, like, I can listen to a lot of atheists talk about things, if you ever see lectures from anybody, and it's like, they're, they're trying to get to your mind and trying to convince you with logic, and that doesn't always work. Like, you need to get people emotionally. It's a tough thing to do, um, and if you can do it, it's a really powerful, because that's what churches do all the time, right? Um, but all those things are very important. I, I gotta say, I'm a little hesitant about saying, and, and again, you're a college professor, I'm a high school teacher, we have, it's a very different world about promoting our views. I'm very cautious about trying to push atheism, even in subtle ways, on any of my students. It's not what I want to be doing in the classroom. And to be fair, if any Christian was doing that, I'd be pissed off. I so, absolutely agree. I'm not, it's not about promoting, but kind of choosing to be open and outside of the classroom as well. Yes, yeah, absolutely. and I think that's the best I can hope for right now, which is to say, I'm public, but we got to do some math to go to your homework. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, yes? Thank you. Page. Really awesome. Um, I watched one of your last videos where you talked about um, religion and politics, how Republicans couldn't be atheists. <laughs> yeah. I had friends of mine that I, I, I'm doing a second degree program at UAB, um, and I had friends that I graduated with who come out as atheists and have messaged me and said, hey, thanks for what you're doing and things of that nature. And um, and I noticed, noticed you got a lot of backlash on the video. I get backlash on every video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um, do you still think, I guess, atheists couldn't be Republicans? Because some of them that have messaged yeah, yeah. Uh, the the point you're you're the video you're referring to, uh, it's kind of a tongue in cheek title, but it said uh, atheists can't be Republicans, and I don't want to get into politics per se here. The point I was trying to make in the video is most atheists do hold a kind of universal set of values. They don't all. Um, and my argument that I was making in that video is, if you support those values, and not everyone does, then right now in this political climate, it probably doesn't make sense to vote for that party. That was the point I was trying to make in the video. Obviously, we know there are atheists of all political stripes, and I actually support, in some ways, 
uh, what some groups have done, like uh, a Secular Coalition for America, American yeah. Atheists, they've sent representatives to like hardcore conservative conferences for the reason of saying, there are atheists in that bunch, let's try to reach out to them because they don't know about us and they don't realize that they could be promoting their values within an atheist context and stuff. Um, and that's a controversial idea in and of itself. But um, yeah, I mean, again, it's a tongue-in-cheek title, but the point was, yeah, if you are, if you support atheist values, however you want to define that, then you're probably going to vote one way. But again, I, one of the things that I really like doing, and I've been doing this a lot more lately, is kind of just pushing some of those boundaries, uh, because there are atheists who don't fall in line with kind of the general demographics. There are atheists who um, are pro-life. There are atheists who are Republican. There are atheists who hold these views that don't necessarily make sense to a lot of other people. And it's kind of interesting to say, how do you hold those views that to us seem really religiously based in a lot of ways? How can you hold those views in a secular context? And it's totally fun to watch people go crazy over trying to argue that stuff. It's ridiculous. It's fun to watch. <laughs> All right, have fun at lunch. <laughs>